Okay, we're going to be working on part 206-6-39, this rod support. Their overall length is uh, 3.5, so that's 3.5, and it is 2 inches this way and 2 inches that way. Uh, both of the ends are 0.5 thick as well as the bottom there. The holes are centered in the top upper portion of this, uh, and they're 1 inch square. So we're going to draw the end of this first. So let's go in here, <clears throat> and we're going to sketch. Start a new drawing. Right project inches is what we're, this one this drawing is in. So I'm going to start. Remember, you sketch, constrain, then dimension. So I'm going to overdo this a little bit. There's some things you can do. Is I'm going to draw. I'm just going to sketch this thing in here like this. It looks something like that. Really bad sketch. All right, really bad sketch. <clears throat> okay. First, I'm going to sketch. Now, it tells us I need 14 dim dimensions needed, but constraining is a way of dimension. So I'm going to constrain this right here to that end point. You'll notice this number keeps dwindling as we go. Then I'll say I want to make this perpendicular. I want that to be perpendicular. Uh, I'm also going to say that I want to make this horizontal. I want to horizontally constrain this line, not the center point, this line. So I'm going to click that line right there. I click that line, too. Oh, those are already... Um, I'm going to then do perpendicular, and I'll say I want this to be perpendicular to this. Looks like those two are worked out. Do this to be perpendicular to that. This one to be perpendicular to this one, and this one to be perpendicular to that one. So I'm kind of overdoing it. The other thing I might want to do is say I want to do a collinear constraint and say I want this line and this line to always be the same, no matter what. Uh, since the top, these two ends were both the same, I'll make those equal. So I'm good there. And I might say that I want this and this to always be equal. So that's over constraining because it's already kind of determined. All right. Okay. So I think I've constrained this all. I can constrain it for now, but you have to constrain everything before you can really uh, move on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this two inches. I'll zoom back out, get that one. I'm going to put a dimension on here to make that one 0.5, and it'll automatically change the one over here. You'll see. And I'm going to put a dimension on right here. That tells us it's 3.5. So this is all constrained. I have one dimension left, and that's the dimension that tells us that this and this is whatever distance. And since that said that this and these were equal, you can't do an equals constraint between a line and an empty space. But I can do this. I can click right on that dimension, and it's going to make it so that dimension is always the same as that. So if I click on this now and I change this to 0.75, this becomes 0.75. You follow? All right. <clears throat> so, we'll go back to 0.5, everything will be 0.5, and then we'll finish this, double-click the mouse wheel, and I'm going to extrude this in that direction. I'll go that way, 2 inches. Oops, let's see, it's highlighted, should have done it too, and that's good. Alright, so next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create, click on this, I'm going to click New Sketch. But before I go too far, I'm going to click right here because what I want to do is click, a. Re uh, I mean, I want to click Project Geometry. I'm going to project that geometry right there. And um, we'll go, let's see, uh, this button right here is the one that says look at. And since I got that now, I can click look at and click that view and it puts it right back where I want it to be. Hit F7 on the keyboard and it cuts it, cuts it out. So now I'm right in that area and this is that top portion. So now when I click a rectangle, I'll draw a rectangle in here like that. And since it's equal on all sides, that and that side are equal, and this dimension is supposed to be one inch, and then I have to center it in that top portion. I'm just going to center it by doing this. Horizontal constraint between this midpoint here and the midpoint of that line we projected right there. Vertically constrain this midpoint to the midpoint of this line that we projected right there. Fully constrained. Blue, that's what we want. So finish the sketch. This time when we extrude it, we want it to cut through all and so we're going to have it cut, select the pro, uh, that pro, uh, profile is this one. So I'm just trying to cut through all in that direction, but if we put it this way, it cuts through all in both directions, which is exactly what we want. So that's it. The part's done. Double-click your mouse wheel to zoom to the extents. We're going to go to High Properties. We're going to change all these things that we should change because it helps us later on as we move. So the title of the part was um, 206-6-39. And I think that was a rod support. Let me let double check. So it was a rod support. So, uh, rod. Oh, wait. The title of this part is a rod support. The company is going to be Cattle Run Engineering. Uh, 
um, the project is going to be the part number is 206-6-39 our description is going to be the rod support again and I believe that's all we need for now alright <clears throat> So we'll click apply and close. Then what we'll do is we, we've got that saved. Oh, we have to save it before we can move on. And we'll save that um, 206-6-39. And it is a rod support. And save the IPT. Once the IPT is saved, we can click new. Go to ANSI inch IDW. And we're good there. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that in my base view. Look how tiny that thing is. So... Um, what I'll do here is before I even get started, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a B size. So I'll right click on that, edit the sheet. I'm going to change this down to a B size page, which is printable by us. Uh, it's, it's manageable, the size we want it to be. So I'll put in a base view. That's actually a good base view. Scales one to one. Uh, so I'll project my other views off of that. Right click and OK. All right, so I'm going to see how close that is at the top there. I'm going to drag this down just a little bit. This might be better on a C size page. Uh, let's see what happens when we put dimensions on here. So we're going to annotate this by putting on the dimensions that we know. And so what we want to do is we want to give a better description than they gave before. So we're going to do this by uh, dimensioning that. Tell us how far down it is and what that dimension is right there. I'm going to try to line those up. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to do the same this way. I'll go ahead and put a dimension that goes from here to here. Put that in place there. And I believe I might mess this up. We're going to chain chain that one. Go from... Let's, let's try something. We're going to try something. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to do a chain dimension from here. Well, that didn't work. Do a chain. Let's see. I'll click the dimension from here to here. That. Let's see. It says chain. What happens? If I click. Obviously, click that dimension. And go to here. Or maybe not. All right. So I messed that all up. So let's just do this. We'll just dimension this line right here, and we'll line that up that way. All right. So I tried something. We learned something. Maybe you can figure it out. That'd be really cool if you did. All right, so we know how to locate that part right there. It's centered in the top, but we don't have to say that. We gave it, gave it exact dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and put a dimension on right here that tells us how tall that entire part is, right? And I can go ahead and add another one that tells us how wide it is right there. That may or may not be a good spot for it. Um, I don't need to add one here because it's already over there. Um, actually, you want to know something. We could go ahead and put this dimension right here, and it actually is going to look really neat. I'll put a dimension that goes right here so that now is um, uh, a good spot for that one I might also do something like this dimension from here to here and put that um, somewhere right here like this you don't ever want that to be on the part right it's just be off the part like that I don't want to double dimension this thing or over dimension it so I'm gonna click cancel I'm gonna right click on that one oops I'm gonna right click on that one and click delete all right, so um, we got the height, we got the width. Oh, what we need to know here is that these two pieces, this one and this one, try to put those at the same height, are 0.5. Now I could do that. The other thing I could do is um, uh, I could right click on this one, oops, right click on it and click delete. Boy, I'm messing that up. Right click on it, click delete. Um, the other thing we could do is put a dimension on here that goes from that endpoint to this endpoint. I'll probably line those up right there like that, which means I need to grab this one. I'm going to hit escape twice, grab that, and I'm going to move this 50 out here on the other side. That way we don't get into a tolerancing issue with that right there. So you could do this this way also. Um, the only reason you would do this the other way of moving this over to here would be um, because this is 50, that's 50, and that's 50, and that way they all stay the same. All right. The other thing I might want to, you might want to do is actually put this dimension up here, and this tells us how wide it is. Which then hit escape twice, right click on this one, and delete it. Um, so now we've got the width, we've got the height, we've got this, uh, the length, we've got the thickness of those things, and then we've located where that's at. All right. So I would go ahead, click save, 
save the uh, DWG file, but we still have to do this. We have to go down our properties. We've got to put in the information that we have. And the title of the part is the all caps, so turn your cap lock on, rod support company, cattle run engineering, or whatever your teacher has you do. Uh, we're going to go here to project. So I'm going to take rod support out here, delete that. We'll put that in the description, rod support. So we should be in good shape at that point. Click apply and close and it fills all this in for us there. All right, double click it and this is where we'll save it again. And then we'll go, to, oops, not to I properties. I want to go to export PDF and you can export your PDF in this format. So there we go. That's what it is. And uh, submit that right there. That's what you would submit when you um, submit it to Blackboard.